Let Me Fix You a Plate, A Tale of Two Kitchens by Elizabeth Lilly. Home to Mama and Papa's house, and there they are going all the way to West Virginia. Let Me Fix You a Plate, A Tale of Two Kitchens by Elizabeth Lilly. For Anaya, who want, wasn't there yet, E.L. Once a year on a Friday night, my family leaves the city and drives for hours and hours to the mountains in West Virginia. My mama opens the door into the cool dark night. Let me fix you a plate, she says. Mama's midnight kitchen is warm and light and bl with blue tiles on the floor and cat plates on the wall. Mama's morning kitchen is clean and bright with sausage sizzling in the skillet, blackberry jam on toast, and tractors on cups. My papa drinks his coffee with cream but no sugar, and daddy does too. My dad and his dad, daddy and papa, with the same coffee cups. Outside, the stray cat who lives in the old trailer meows, and morning mountain fog wrinkles and rolls. Later, my sisters stack vanilla wafer cookies. Mama pours the pudding and I cover the top with slices of banana. Then we eat it all. Three days later, we leave Mama's house so early it is still night and drive and drive and drive south and south and south to a little orange house on a patch of scratchy grass in Florida. We get out of the car and the hot sticky air hugs us close. Then Abuela runs out and hugs us even closer. Hi, comita, adentro, comense. There's food inside. Come and eat, she says. In Abuela's midnight kitchen, white tiles feel cool under my feet. Aunts and cousins and uncles and neighbors talk over each other and above my head. I crunch tostones and scoop a rose and slurp flan and fall asleep at the table. My mom's still laughing, saying loud Spanish words that I don't understand. Outside Abuela's morning kitchen, red ants climb over scratchy grass and bite my feet while I pick naranjas with abuela in the yard. We drink them as juice and eat arepas and queso blanco. My mom helps her mom to fry the corn flour cakes, my mom and her mom cooking and chatting together. Abuelo teaches me Spanish words while I look around. Boca means mouth. There are little wooden houses from Puerto Rico, keys hanging below. Nariz means nose, a shelf of nothing but frog figurines, glass and stone and wood. Oreja means ear, and a sliding glass door between air-conditioned room and the sticky summer heat. In the evening, Tio Elmer makes coquito, and the grown-ups drink the coconut rum punch that looks but does not taste like eggnog. I hide behind the couch with my book while my cousins and aunts and uncles dance salsa and merengue. Abuela finds me and gives me tostones. Three days later, we leave the little orange house and drive and drive and drive back toward our house in the city. We stare at the changing scenery, tummies full, hearts fuller, already missing the salsa, sausage, toast, tostones, ants, ants, arepas, abuela, naranjas, bananas, mountains, mama, cats, and fog, and scratchy grass. We reach our house, tired and hungry. I look at mommy. She is tall and brown, bags under her tired eyes, missing Spanish words and oranges on trees. I look at Daddy, pink from sunburn, messy hair and stubble chin, missing Mama's meals and quiet mountain tops. I'm hungry, I say. So Mommy mixes flour and Daddy beats eggs. I set syrup on the table. Mommy's midnight kitchen has bright lights and warm wood floors. Plantain pressers next to potato mashers. Outside our windows glow like gems seen by sleepy passing cars. Inside there's warm soft talk and air that smells like waffles. Daddy works the iron, mommy forks waffles onto plates, and their three little politos, hungry little chicks, gobble them up and then drift off to sleep in their soft feather nests. So Florida to our house, to our house and home. <laughs>